Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion of Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Kim Strassel here with Mene Ukwebu-Rua and Bill McGurn. Mike Pence came in and sat down with us in a wide-ranging meeting on Tuesday. We covered a lot of topics, and our editorial pages will have a much longer piece on that Q&A in the coming days. But we did break out in the editorial page today his comments on the Trump indictment. And he had a version of that in a podcast he also did yesterday in New York with our esteemed colleague, Jerry Baker. This is Pence talking on that podcast, Free Expression. I can't defend what's alleged. These are serious allegations. And the handling of, of classified uh, materials, as I learned in my years as vice president and my years on the Foreign Affairs Committee, is a very serious matter that bears upon the national security of the United States. If these materials had ever uh, in, in, inadvertently made their way in the hands uh, of, uh, of, of foreign interests, uh, it, it would jeopardize the security of our country as well as the safety and security of our armed forces. It's a really important point, which um, fortunately has been a bit lost in all the accusations of politics and the double standards, Hillary Clinton and Biden's records versus Trump's records. But Pence also added to us that this really hit home to him because he has two members of his immediate family serving in the armed forces of the country. Any release could potentially compromise their security. So, I mean, it reminds us, Bill, that we have this classification system for a reason. And I actually think we started to have a problem with this back when Trump came to office, when so many of his critics and opponents started leaking classified information right and left in an effort to undermine his administration. But it has become a really big problem in Washington. Bill, would you agree? And, and what do we do about that? It is a problem. Problem. When I was in the White House, we took it very seriously. Like, for example, when you had a document marked classified, like there's no doubt when you have a document, whether it's classified or not, it's marked, has different markings that tell you what it is. And my office in the West Wing was right across from the men's room. If I went into the men's room and I had it on my desk and I wasn't there, I could get cited for a violation. And I wasn't, but, you know, people were. They took it very seriously. So I think there's been a casual use. I mean, Joe Biden's records, some of them, he took papers from when he's a senator. That means you had to walk out of skiff with the document and no. So I suspect some of these documents lose their value over time. So it may not be as important, but there's definitely a too casual use. There's also over classification. Uh, I'm not sure what you can do about it. And of course, as usual, this is a problem with Trump's defense. It's like a group of kids go into a store and they shoplift. Then the one kid has never done it before, but he's with them and he did it. He says, but all the other guys were doing it and you just went after me. And he's right, but that's not a defense, really. You're still guilty as charged. So I think Trump has a case that plenty of people abused this before, notably Hillary Clinton, who moved all her communications, and I think they were hacked right, into her private residence, and nothing happens. And he's the one that gets in trouble for it. But, you know, it's hard to say my defense is everyone does it. You know, legally, it's not a good argument. Right. It strikes me that it's completely possible to hold two ideas in your head at the same time, that Donald Trump's cavalier handling of these documents is something that is a bit indefensible, as Pence was saying, and that, you know, people should be critical of him. And you might even, therefore, question his judgment and the wisdom of having him in a position of importance, given the handling of those records. Yeah, I think it's also possible to have the position that, nonetheless, the idea of going down the road of a criminal probe and an indictment and taking this first ever moment in history is not something that's wise for the country. 
And interestingly, Manet, that was Pence's point to us. He was very critical of Trump's handling of this, but he also made it clear that he thought the decision to indict Trump was likely political. And I'll read a little bit from his statement to us, which we have in our editorial today. He put the whole Justice Department in light of two and a half years of a Russia hoax. He said that was the context for it. And then, quote, after years of politicization, it's hard for me to believe that politics didn't play some role in this decision. He said that he believes Attorney General Merrick Garland owes it to the public to explain, quote, what of any role he played or his judgment played in the decision to move forward with an unprecedented indictment. He also added, I think millions of Americans are deeply troubled by this indictment, particularly given the fact that Hillary Clinton engaged in very similar behavior in the 2016 campaign and did not face an indictment. And we've got to have equal treatment under the law in this country. So, Manet, Pence seems to be going down the road of trying to kind of put this both ways, having both of those thoughts out there. And I'm seeing some other candidates do it. The argument that you can be critical of the president's conduct, but you can also defend him against what some view as a politicized DOJ indictment. How do you think that plays for him on the campaign trail? Does it work? Yeah, it is it is a stance on this issue, which is likely to animate and please very few people, because as you said, he is essentially taking both sides. But I think that there are a lot of people who are paying close attention to the charges being brought against Donald Trump who are coming to the exact same conclusion that Mike Pence seems to have, which is that on the pure legal merits of the case, it does not look very good for Donald Trump. There seems to be very clear evidence that he violated his responsibility to take proper care of these classified documents and not to reveal them, that they were severely mishandled, that quite a lot of people theoretically would have had access to them at Mar-a-Lago, and that he was conscious of all this because, again, the indictment alleges that he spoke about how certain documents he was showing to visitors at Mar-a-Lago were classified and even admitted that he wasn't supposed to have them. And so it will be very difficult for Donald Trump to defend himself on the legal merits of the case. And yet, as Mike Pence points out, that still does not necessarily mean it was a wise thing for Merrick Garland and Jack Smith to bring these charges against him because of the political impact that it will have. That precedent of having others also having been known to have missed handled the documents is going to make it so that all of Trump's supporters believe that he's being uniquely targeted. Even if he did violate the letter of the law, he'll always be able to point to the fact that similar charges were not brought against other people who might have had a stronger or cleaner reputation and that he's being singled out for who he is. And it's just very clear, as Bill said early on in this podcast, that whether Trump is exonerated or whether he's convicted, that neither one is going to lead to a good result. The result is going to be a suspicion by his supporters and general damage to the integrity of the U.S. presidential election system. And so I think Mike Pence, like all the other candidates, are going to have a very hard time continuing to talk about the charges being brought against Trump on the campaign trail. But I think that he has done the right thing by pointing out the strong evidence against Donald Trump and the role that he's played in bringing this all upon himself but also still continuing to say that it wasn't a wise decision by the Biden administration to bring these charges. And that message will resonate with voters. Your point about loss of faith in institutions, that gets to one last thing that Pence said to us during that meeting, which was he said that if he's elected in 2024, he promised a clean house. Quote, we're going to give the Department of Justice a fresh start with men and women who are respected on both sides of the aisle for their commitment to the law. You know, Bill, I've heard some other candidates say this too, Ron DeSantis, and I'm, I think it's certainly a line that is going to really resonate with a lot of Republican voters because they have watched the either the FBI or the Department of Justice in some shape or manner or form over the last three election cycles engage in some way that, that seem to put their thumb on the scale of the outcome. And we've had some other instances of politicized behavior 
that really does undermine faith in the institution. That being said, I mean, again, call me a cynic. I, I remember when Trump named Bill Barr to the Department of Justice, a guy who really was truly interested in getting politics back out of the DOJ. And all that happened is Democrats demonized him as a political figure. So I guess I'm kind of curious your thoughts. Like, it's it's all well and good to say, like, we're going to depoliticize the Department of Justice. But how at this point, given the damage that has been done, how do you even do that? Yeah, I think your point is excellent. I was thinking his point about that are respected. They might be respected going in, but if they uphold the rule of law and try to follow it objectively, they will be demonized by the left. I think it's more important to say we're going to get someone who's going to be objective about the law. As many points out, the distinctions are very hard for the Republican candidates. But I think one way of expressing it is whatever you think of Donald Trump, if he's convicted, this is very bad for a country, the way it's been handled. It's not about Donald Trump fundamentally. It's about whether we have a rule of law in the country. And one of the things I found particularly appalling, and one reason I don't like special counsels, is that there's all this pretense the Justice Department is independent. The attorney general reports to the president the idea that the Justice Department is empowered to make decisions with no accountability to a boss is very anti-democratic and anti-constitutional. Merrick Garland should know and should approve or disprove what his special counsel says. And frankly, he owes it to the president to tell him. And the president has the authority. Now he has to make it judgment. Is this the right thing to do or not? But to pretend I have nothing to say in it, that's very troubling too. What it means is that the political class is dumping responsibility for controversial decisions on the appointed class. And I find that as troubling as anything. Yeah, it's a great point, Bill. For all, Pence talked about having people who were respected. I agree with you that I think it would be a huge step in the right direction to simply have some political figures who once a good stood up to be accountable. And I think the public would appreciate that too. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Manet. We thank our listeners. We remind you that we are here every weekday. We'll be back tomorrow. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. And if you like the show, please hit that subscribe button.